So my friends, I'm here to tell each and every one of us that we humans must learn to live with, accept, and celebrate diversity or we will perish. Diversity is at the very heart of the universe. From that first moment, 13.7 billion years ago, when something emerged out of nothing in a great swirl of energy, diversity was on a roll. Particles joined together to form protons and neutrons that then hooked up with electrons to create atoms, molecules, hydrogen, and helium, great clouds of gas that collapsed into stars and galaxies. Four and a half billion years ago, our solar system, the sun, planets, and our earth. Three and a half billion years ago, life emerged in our oceans and 500 million years ago came crawling out of the sea onto the land and life was off and running and leaping and flying. And a few million years ago, hominids climbed out of the trees, went walking upright on the plains, and here we are. Homo sapiens, but only one among 8.7 million species on our planet Earth. The universe loves diversity. And if you have any doubt about that, just take a closer look at one species, us, just for example. Seven billion strong, and every fingerprint unique. A whole variety of skin colors and facial features, shapes and sizes, gender identity, sexual orientations, differing physical and mental abilities. And then add culture and you end up with over 6,000 different languages, a multitude of religions and customs, social norms and structures. I tell you, diversity is the name of the game. Just take a look around. It is the name of the game. However, there is a problem. Actually, a big problem, because it turns out that we human beings are not all that keen on diversity. I mean, kangaroos and panda bears are real cute, but differences among ourselves, oh, not so much. We humans actually are herd-like creatures. That, that may sound a little insulting, but actually we love to hang out with people pretty much like ourselves in homogeneous communities. When we are confronted by differences, we are a little uncomfortable, even distrustful, and very frequently fearful. For many reasons, like ignorance, or perceived threat, or scapegoating, or fear, we react with prejudice and with discrimination. And we are willing to just reject the other and move far too easily to violence. And then that can escalate to, well, ethnic cleansing and genocide. And then to make matters worse, we misuse religion to support our prejudice and call out divine approval on our way of doing things and a holy condemnation on all alternatives. In fact, in our times, there is a frightening upsurge of religious 
fundamentalism all around the world, which seeks to impose rigid answers to all questions about belief and behavior. Diversity and pluralism are rejected in what I see as a desperate search for certainty and security. And words like infidel or heathen or sinner or even God-forsaken secular humanist <laughs> are used like weapons to condemn diversity, which we all know is incredibly dangerous. For our world truly is a global village, and refugees and immigrants are crisscrossing borders and continents, and our cities, like Vancouver, are becoming ever more multicultural. Friends, we must learn to live with our neighbors, those who are like us and those who are very different. And if we don't, we are in deep, deep trouble. <laughs> now, let me make this a little more personal. I am a gay man, and it took me many years to be able to say that publicly because I am of an age that when I was growing up, I learned very quickly and painfully that homosexuality was not okay. It was, in fact, rarely talked about except in smutty jokes about fags and homos and queers. And I actually learned how to laugh at those jokes in self-protection. Homosexuality was immoral, a psychiatric illness, a crime. In my teen years, if I had actually expressed my affection for another man, I, I could have been thrown into jail. Homosexuality was not decriminalized in Canada until 1969, though in retrospect, I look back and realize that was probably the best present I could have received for my 20th birthday. Uh, I'm no longer a criminal just for being me. Uh, I'm, I'm actually legal. I grew up in church where I was told very clearly homosexuality is sinful. It could have been much worse. I could have had to endure endless sermons that named me as an abomination headed straight to hell, which is still what too many religious leaders around the globe are doing, preaching hatred and violence towards lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people, members of the LGBT community. They interpret their various scriptures, I would say misinterpret them, to declare that God hates fags. Did you know that in 75 countries or more, it is a crime to be homosexual, and that is backed up by the threat of lengthy prison terms? And in several countries, gay and lesbian people can be legally executed simply for being themselves. Well, I'm here to tell you today that they are so wrong. So, so wrong. Oh. God, however you understand that term, creator, spirit, higher power, Allah, Krishna, or maybe just the more, capital T, capital M, God loves diversity. And religion at its best can help us humans actually discover the gift of diversity and celebrate it. 
For at the heart of all the great and enduring religions of the world, there is a proclamation of the sacredness of the human being, made perhaps in the image of God or an embodiment of spirit. Namaste, the spirit in me greets the spirit in you. Each human being is of inestimable value and to be respected. And at the very depth of all great religions, there is an ethos of love. We are invited, no, actually we are commanded to love each other, not just with a mushy, romantic sentimentality, but practically and concretely with acceptance and compassion and with justice. And we are commanded not only to love family and friends, the people who are pretty much like us, but we are commanded to love all our neighbors, including strangers and even our so-called enemies, the ones who are most different from us. So I stand here and tell you I am a gay Christian and that is not a contradiction. I stand here and say I'm an openly gay ordained minister in the United Church of Canada and that's not a problem. In fact, in 2012, I was elected to be the moderator of the United Church, the spiritual leader of the largest Protestant denomination in Canada, and most likely the only openly gay leader of a major Christian denomination in the world. Whoa! Go figure. which is simply to say that religion can absolutely and truly affirm LGBT people and help us celebrate that diversity. It, it really can. So as you can imagine, I have spent a lot of time and energy trying to understand what brought about that change in my church and in my country. And I know there are many, many reasons, education, political legislation, the blessed charter of rights, but I have come to believe that there is a more fundamental and underlying reason, which is that LGBT people were willing, no, they were determined to tell their stories, to be open, and honest about who they were, to be absolutely authentic to their truth, despite the risk of rejection and condemnation. Lesbians and gays, bisexuals and transgender people, we came out to family, to friends, to neighbors and colleagues, and we said, don't get stuck on the label. See me. Know me. And hear my story. I am your son, your daughter. I'm your brother, your sister. I'm your aunt, your uncle, your nephew, your niece. I live across the street. I work in the office down the hallway. I'm your doctor, as well as your hairdresser. I'm your gardener and your policeman. I'm a member of the legislature, the orchestra, the union, the hockey team, really, of the hockey team. I am your minister, I am a fellow church member. And yes, I'm 
different. I'm sexually attracted to and fall in love with people of my own gender. But, but did you hear that? I fall in love with people of my own gender. And that does not make me a lesser human being. I laugh, I cry, I love, I make love, I hurt, I bleed, sometimes I screw up, sometimes I shine. And I am, like every one of you, a beloved child of God. Believe that. Believe that. Believe that about me and believe it about yourself. For when stories get told and heard, change happens. When we hear the pain and the struggle and the deep and real passion, we realize we're not talking about abstract theories or some random Bible verses, but we are engaged with flesh and blood human beings who are different and also the same. Storytelling leads to an engagement, to a conversation. Questions get asked and responded to. There is dialogue. And in the unfolding and the hearing of a story, we discover that diversity, it isn't a threat. It, it isn't a problem. It is, in fact, a true and amazing gift that will expand our experience and vision of the world. So I have a challenge for all of us, and it is so simple and sometimes so difficult. I want each and every one of you to tell your story, to be creative and courageous and find those moments when you can share with others what it is that makes you unique and special. To speak your truth with vulnerability and with authenticity. Saying, for instance, what it's like to live with a physical disability, a learning disability, to live with mental illness, to be a refugee, a, an immigrant, a, a member of a racial minority, an indigenous person who survived Indian residential schools. What does it mean for you to say, I am a Jew, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Sikh, a Hindu, a Christian, an atheist? Tell your story. Be courageous and share your reality with others. A second challenge, though, the flip side of the first. I challenge each and all of us to listen to the stories of other people, to do so with an open mind and with deep attention. In fact, I encourage you to be proactive and intentionally seek out people with whom you are not easily comfortable. Perhaps to attend a First Nation powwow or volunteer at a food bank or hang out at a Sikh Visaki parade. Do so with an openness to conversation. Ask questions and then listen respectfully to the responses. Do not do not be judgmental, but go with a willingness to learn, and you will then discover how amazingly diverse this universe can be. So friends, I, I tell you once more, if we are willing and able and courageous enough to tell our stories, our truth, and if we are authentic in our openness and listen, I would say, if we listen with love to the story of the other person, we will deeply discover that diversity, it ain't a problem. 
It's a blessing. And we will not only survive, but we will flourish. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.